whenever we talk about blood pressure, we always talk about the heart. But there is an extremely important organ that we always tend to miss. <laughs> the kidneys. But how do the kidneys maintain blood pressure? Before we get into exactly how kidneys maintain blood pressure, we need to know what exactly blood pressure is. The heart pumps blood that goes through the entire body via blood vessels. It contracts and relaxes to do so. While the blood flows through these vessels, it exerts some pressure on the walls of the vessels. Similar to how water exerts pressure on the walls of the pipe while flowing through it. The measurement of this pressure is called blood pressure. If you place your thumb gently on your left or right wrist, that throbbing pulse you feel right there is your blood pressure of the blood flowing in your arteries. When the heart contracts to pump blood to other body parts, the blood pressure is at its maximum measurement. This is called systolic blood pressure. Its normal value is about 120 mmHg. In between two contractions, there is a small gap when the heart relaxes, where the blood pressure is at a minimum measurement. This is diastolic blood pressure. Its normal value is about 80 mmHg. Together, they make the normal blood pressure value, which is 120 by 80 mmHg. The blood pressure measurement we saw earlier can change depending on how much blood is flowing through the vessels. This is called blood volume. The more blood flows through the vessels, the more pressure it exerts on them, which means an increased blood pressure. Just like more water exerted, more pressure on the glass. The flow of low blood volume inside the vessels causes low blood pressure. Just like less water exerted, less pressure on the glass. Since 50% of blood is water, blood volume is determined by the amount of water in the blood. And the water balance in the body is maintained by the kidneys. Let us see how that happens step by step. The blood reaches the kidneys through a blood vessel called the renal artery. The renal artery branches into smaller vessels called afferent arterioles, which feed blood to the functional units of the kidneys, the nephrons. Each kidney has about 1 million nephrons. The nephrons, with the help of the afferent arterioles, sense any change in blood pressure. As mentioned already, a change in blood pressure indicates blood volume variations. If the nephrons sense that the blood volume is low, it sends less water into the urine and vice versa. The rest is reabsorbed into the blood. Let's zoom into the kidneys to see how this happens. The kidneys release a hormone called renin directly into the blood. And once renin starts doing its magic, two more hormones are activated in the body. These hormones signal the kidney to send water and sodium back into the blood in case of low blood pressure. In case of high blood pressure, they signal the kidney to simply excrete more out via urine. And as we know, water affects blood volume, which affects blood pressure. But why sodium? Well, it is said that water follows sodium. That is why if you put salt on a vegetable, it starts losing water. Because of the presence of sodium in the salt, water moves out of the vegetable. Similarly, sodium moves water into the blood too with its presence. Well, that is why if any of your family members have high blood pressure, the doctor strictly advise them to watch the amount of salt they are consuming. And boom! 
your blood pressure is now back to normal. And these were the steps that took place for that to happen. Number one, blood flows to the kidneys through the renal artery. Number two, the renal artery branches into smaller vessels called afferent arterioles that feed blood to the nephrons. Number three, the nephrons and afferent arterioles sense blood volume variations. Number four, renin is released by the kidneys into the blood. Number five, renin activates necessary hormones. Number six, if blood pressure is low, more sodium and water is sent into the blood. If blood pressure is high, less sodium and water is sent into the blood. It seems so simple when we look at it this way. But the kidney is an extraordinarily complex organ. And extraordinarily cool too. On that note, I want to leave you all with one question. How much blood do you think a kidney filters in one day? Let me know in the comment section below and do not forget to subscribe to our channel for more conceptual clarity and engaging learning sessions.